So we're going to learn how to load a set of still images as what's called a stack and automatically turn them into uh, layers and then take those layers and make them into an animation and then take that animation and turn it into a GIF. So that's the goal is to make an uh, animated GIF, uh, particularly we're using a bunch of uh, still images that were for a stop motion that we created. So we're in Photoshop. Oh gosh, I should have done the file menu. Oh well, let's do this. That's not good. Well, we can still see it, um, which is good. Is there's under the file menu there's automate and um, or no, it's scripts. Yes, load files into a stack. We can. Uh, Choose a set of files or a folder. I'm going to use a folder because I made that fo one folder with all these images in it. I'm going to browse. I have those files somewhere. Where are they? There it is. So that's the folder, and you can't see it, but I'm going to select open. And so those are the images. And um, we're not going to do any of these things like we don't want to work with a smart object. We just want to load them, and it's going to automatically turn them into layers. So you can see them. Uh, it opens all the images first. And now we have them all here in one layer. So we need to rotate these all. So um, again, you can't see the top menu, so we're going to go to under it's under image so I'm saying it. it's under image and then we're gonna say image rotation and we're gonna say 90 degrees counterclockwise and so that rotates that's a global you can do specific layer rotations like so on the right here we see all these images on a layer and and each layer you see these little eyeballs uh, next to them that means the layer is visible and so you only see one image because the each image is of the same size um, so as I hide a layer, the ones below it start to show up, all right? And then it disappears, and when there's no, none of the layers are visible, you see a blank canvas, and these, like, checkerboard is the equivalent of a blank canvas, all right? So I'm just going to, and you can start to get a sense of what this animation is going to look like already. Now... Um, right now, at the bottom here, we have this timeline visible, all right? And um, if it's not visible, you can reveal it under the uh, window, and you can't see the word window, but the top palette says window, and you, you choose, <coughs> no, not this one, uh, timeline. And if this is unchecked, you check it, and now you'll see this timeline. And you can click this Create Frame Animation, and um, right now we only see one, but the timeline has its own little menu right here. And we pick this timeline and uh, we're going to say make frames from layers. So each frame we need, if you think about it, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven images across seven layers. And each frame needs to have each different layer visible or each image. And there's something important about it because technically in a frame you can have multiple layers visible and that allows for transparency and stuff like that. So we're gonna say make frames from layers and it's now has them and we can push play, it's gonna only do it once and boop, it's, they're backwards, all right? So I can hold down the shift key and select all of them and then I can choose to reverse the frames, all right? And now as I hit play, all right, she moves forward. Now, it's kind of fast. It's never, I mean, there, there could be a lot more frames, and it'd be fun to do more things with it, going back and forth and things like that, but that, that would have been taken a lot more time in the shooting, and we did this in class. Um, I can highlight them all, and right now you can see the timing is set to basically as fast as possible. No, no pause between frames. So we can set a pause of you know, say 0.1 seconds uh, through 10 seconds, there's these intervals that you can pre-select or you can choose one and say other. And I can say, uh, set this to, I'm going to start at like 0 0.06 seconds and hit play. Uh, and that's really fast. 
So um, let's change it to just point 0.1 and play it. All right. And so it's moving through. Now, right now it's set to just play it once, but I could set this to forever. And it's going to keep playing it. And so technically it's like, okay, that's kind of what it's going to look like. All right, that's, that's the gift. Now I'm going to do something fun. Let's make her go back and forth. All right, let's have her roll back and forth. So if you think about to do that, I need to go frame one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, then back to six, five, four, three, two. And then one we don't have to repeat because it's one. So we want to go kind of back and forth. So there's no way to go back and forth and back and forth. We can't tell the application to go back and forth. But what we can do is take these frames, six through five, because you can imagine I need to go frames one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then go six, five, four, three, two, and it goes back to one. And then it could loop. So I need to take frames two through six, copy and paste them after seven, and then reverse them. All right, because right, it's gonna be two through six. So um, I have these highlighted. I'm gonna say edit, copy frames, and this, this is useful because this becomes useful in video gifts. Sometimes you want to like reverse the motion to generate a loop based on forward and back, forward and back, forward and back. So this is a way of creating a forward and back by taking the frames that are between the first frame and the last frame, copy and pasting them, and then reversing them. So it was the set of frames that were between the first and last, copy frames, go to the last one, say paste frames, and we're going to uh, paste it after the selection, which is the last one. All right, so they're there. They don't, you don't see six through two. It just now it's 12 frames total, but we have to reverse them. Before you unselect them, we need to reverse those. So this is now what was six, five, four, three, two. Six, five, four, three, two. All right, and now as we play, forward and back, and forward and back. So we've created this loop and we're kind of satisfied. And this is fine. Now, the one thing you should check, and again, you can't see the top file menu, my fault. Uh, I'm going to go under the image menu, which is the top one. And you should always check image size. This is a pretty big image still. You can see it's 1280 by 960. That's pretty big. You know, it's not crazy big. But if you see, you know, like you have to think of it, you're generating this image for the web. Um, pixel dimensions are, are determined by whatever the screen space you're using. The blog that we post these to can matter. You know, there's no necessarily right or wrong. Too big is a pain in the ass because then you're going to deal with generating a huge image file. So I'm just going to reduce this to 800 and it's going to probably make it, yeah, 800 by 600. And it looks small, but this is actually, I'm, I'm using spacebar command key to, to make the, 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 the equivalent of the, the short keyboard shortcut to the magnifying glass, and I'm going to click, and you notice the percent size. Right now it's at 50%, that's 60%, that's 100%. So that's the actual size of this on this screen. So now that's it, going back and forth. I'm happy with that size. And now we need to export this as a GIF. Photoshop under the file menu, which you again can't see file, you have a save for web function. Right. We save for web, and now we have the save for web interface, um, and we need to make sure we select GIF. And this is where we have some choices to make, and to change, uh, you can affect the final file size. Um, right now, it says it's 2.59 megabytes, but that's because uh, it's using only 64 colors. I can change this to the maximum, gives can use a maximum of 256 colors, and it's gonna recalculate the frames using more colors, and you'll see the color table gets bigger. All right, so now there's 256, and it added a megabyte and a half to the file, so it's almost four megabytes, which is pretty big. There's some other things that you can change, and so you can manipulate this based on, like, if you wanna optimize file size in the context of how it looks, stuff like that. Um, there are, you can turn off what's called a dither. Dither is what creates this dot patterns, and so it's not, and it's not particularly that problematic in this one because you don't notice it. So I'm gonna turn, keep it off, 
and I'm going to say maybe 128 and see how that looks. And it looks pretty good. All right. And so it's under three megabytes. It's back to two and a half. But notice like if I go all the way down to four, like what does four colors look like? And maybe you like that. You're like, wow, that's kind of cool looking. So realize this is another a processing part that you may enjoy. And that's what Mariana Foons have done to her, her versioning of that GIF of that face. She had done different color spaces. And the cool thing is you can literally change the color. So I could change this uh, gray. I could change it to a red. All right. And say, OK. And now I've got something completely different. All right. So you can do something natural or you can really change the look of it based on what your goals are. And I kind of like that. I think that's kind of cool. And notice it's suddenly incredibly smaller, right? It's only, uh, it's, it's, under, it's under a megabyte. Uh, and I can even add diffusion. Let's add a dither back to it. So you get some of that stuff. And now you can see what a dither looks like. It's the dots to make blends. So the dither becomes more visible. So I'm gonna save that, this crazy four color version. I'm going to put it in that folder so I can find it rolling on the log. So rolling on the log. One of the nice things about Photoshop, you can type normally and leave spaces and it automatically makes it a more web appropriate file name and puts dashes in there. So I, you can't see it, but I'm going to click save underneath. And now uh, back in the finder, I get like it. Um, back in the finder, we can find the uh, file. Here it is, and that's it. And one of the things to be wary of in Photoshop is it goes faster than in, in the, uh, and so maybe I don't like it. You know, I don't like this kind of flashing here. You go back and make versions, change it. Change the settings of the GIF file and, and, and work on it. But now I've made a GIF in Photoshop based on an image stack. Um, this is pretty similar to what you would do, and I can save this as a Photoshop file so I can rework it, rolling. Um, and I can use that and embed it in a blog post, like upload it and embed it rolling on the log. And it's not so far to work with, uh, so I'm gonna say file, and just I'll do this very quickly. I might as well add this at the very end. Um, you can also import video frames to layers. And as I mentioned, you gotta find a tool, and I'm not gonna show the, that tool right now, to cut the video into something more manageable. Um, and I'm going to show you a piece from uh, that I probably already made before, so it'll be easier. This is from a blog I do. Let's make it something I haven't done before. All right, this was fun. So this is a piece of video. And uh, depending on the length of it, you may have to choose to, you know, I, I use this rule of thumb to just kind of, video is 30 frames per second. Um, if the gifts get much more than 30 frames, it's starts to get unwieldy in terms of size and length. So if it's say a three second clip, that's 90, thir three times uh, 30 is 90 frames. So that means you'd have to limit to every three frames. So I don't remember how long this is, so I'm just going to, by default, throw it to every two frames. And it automatically generates uh, layers and, and, and uh, a timeline of frames. And this is the winner of the world and so technically, you could look at this. It's 23 frames. Um, I'm under the file menu again. And I could uh, save for the web right away. And um, I could go back to a, a, a larger color palette. And so everything is similar afterward. It's just the process of getting that stack of images. It happens to be from video rather than that stop motion animation. And you save it. And so this is the, be the beginning, and so this would work, and this is, uh, this is the Winter Warlock. I'm not doing, there's more work. I, I didn't bother to uh, work on the timings, and um, 
I can open it and see how it works. And, you know, it's a gift. All right. The last thing I'll say is one of the things that's fun is you can add pauses. So let's say I wanted to see the warlock longer. I can, you don't have to have the same timing for everything. So in this one, the funny thing is, um, I don't really need all these extra frames because they're all the same, right? So I could, after you see the, the little uh, change in, the, in the, the exposure there for a second, I can throw away these four, five here. I can trash them, I'm hitting the, selecting them and trashing them and saying, okay, I'm gonna make this one 0.2 seconds, or actually I'm gonna make it really long. I'm gonna make it a full second. So when I save this now, um, winter war lock with a pause. You can use uh, timings as part of your process. You know, and so now that frame just lasts a bit longer. And so this is where the kind of things that like Imgur's video to GIF was a great simple tool, but you obviously, and this is the, just the beginning because you can do other things in Photoshop and we'll show them later on where you can add layers, all right? So I'm gonna stop.